No engine brakes. 3D printing is a truly wonderful thing. You might have heard somebody over the last few years tell you about how cheap it is to 3D print something instead of making it in another manner. And while that is true, what they're not doing is telling you the entire story about how much it costs them to get to where they're at. For example, this Legend of Zelda ocarina only cost me about a dollar and 20 cents worth of filament to make and a couple hours of my time. But that's not the whole price of a print like this. Whether you're looking to print toys and trinkets, gizmos and gadgets, start a business, augment a business, or just make really cool stuff, 3D printing might be for you. Let's take a deep dive into the real cost of 3D printing at home. Before we go any further, we do have to assume one thing, and that's that you already have a home computer. I'm not going to include the price of the computer in the overall comparison. By the way, our analytics show us that 89% of our viewers aren't currently subscribed to the channel. If you find this content useful in some way, please consider subscribing to the channel. The more subscribers that we have, the more we're going to be enabled to keep producing more and better content for you. We are giving away free spools of Polymaker filament every 250 subscribers, and we're getting close to that 500 mark. And at 1,000 subscribers, we'll be giving away an Anycubic Cobra Go 3D printer, which we did a whole video about, and then a follow-up review. Those videos will be linked in the description below. When it comes to starting your 3D printing journey, the first thing that you're going to probably think is, aren't those machines really expensive? And they used to be but that also varies based off of how you define the phrase, very expensive. Machines are going to start around $89, all the way up to millions of dollars. One million dollars. And that price is just based off the application of the printer. The $89 printer is something that's going to be kind of toy grade, whereas the multi-million dollar machines are going to be for the big boys, people printing things like titanium, like. Boeing or maybe even a car company like Koenigsegg, who knows? Obviously, an $89 3D printer sounds really good, right? The problem is an $89 machine is going to be very entry level, I'll say, meaning it's going to be lacking on a lot of features and creature comforts. While it might be good for somebody who's looking to dip their toes into the waters of 3D printing, the reality of the situation is those machines are likely not going to be very good, which might lead to more frustration than it's worth, and you may end up giving up on 3D printing before your journey can really get started. If you want us to do a video on this channel about the $89 3D printer, let us know in the comments below, and that might be something that we pick up and talk about and show you why it's probably not a great investment for you. In my opinion, the sweet spot for a home gamer 3D printer in terms of overall starting budget is going to be right at about $300. The $300 price point will enable you to buy machines like the Soval SV06, the Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro, the Ender 3 S1 if you can catch it on sale, and at that price point you're going to get a lot of the really good features that we see all the big reviewers talking about. You'll get magnetic build plates, direct drive extruders, you'll get automatic bed leveling, maybe they'll even throw in a filament runout sensor. If you're curious about machines at different price points, we did just do a video on that topic showing off the current top five 3D printers for the summer in my opinion. You might want to give that a watch. Before you make a final purchasing decision on your printer, if a price seems too good to be true, it probably is. So make sure that you spend some time watching the reviews and getting some feedback before you make your final decision to make sure that you don't end up getting burned. Machines go on sale with some regularity these days, especially on Amazon. There's various coupons and other deals, or maybe they'll throw in some filament to help you get started. But it really seems like these days, $300 buys you a lot of 3D printer in terms of performance and feature set. So for the sake of this video, we are going to go with a 3D printer budget of $300. Of course, you can cut the budget a little bit, like Micro Center does sales pretty regularly where you can pick up machines in person. You might be able to catch an Ender 3 for $99 or the Anycubic Cobra Go that we're giving away. I think I paid around $140 for that. So you can cut the cost on the machine, but be mindful as price goes down, typically so does performance, reliability, and feature set. So that's it, right? You have your machine purchased, you're off to the races, you're ready to go. You want to start making some 3D prints. I'm ready, I'm ready. There's more to the story than that. The next thing that you're going to need is you need 
filament. Filament, like this polymaker that we're giving away at 500 subscribers, is the lifeblood of 3D printing. Without it, you can't make ocarinas, happy frogs, or adorable melting popsicles. Your machine just sits and collects dust without having filament to run through it. Odds are, your 3D printer is going to come with a little sample spool of filament. These little coils are typically about 50 grams and are junk. Honestly, they're not big enough to really print anything with and they end up being more hassle than they're worth. By the time you take it out of the packaging, get it carefully positioned on the spool holder and feed it in the extruder, you have a bird's nest and you're not going to be able to print anything with it anyway. So what I do with those filament samples that come with my printers is throw them away. You're garbage. When it comes to filament, you can get really solid quality for around $22 a spool. And I am talking about Polymaker. No, they're not directly supporting the channel in any way. It is just the material that I personally buy. All of the filament that I've bought in the last year or so has been Polymaker because they have a ton of colors for PLA. They have a ton of different materials from PLA to PETG to ABS to some more exotic stuff like carbon fiber nylons. They've got stretchy TPUs if you need to print something flexible or soft. They have a lot of variety. The material is always of high quality and incredibly consistent. I don't have any issues with batches of prints being made from two different spools being mismatched in colors, and it helps in my opinion that they're so involved in the community. A spool of Polymaker Polylite PLA is going to set you back around $22. One spool of Polylite PLA is going to let you print quite a few of these little ocarinas. I mean, that only cost me about 53 grams of filament to make, and a full kilo spool is going to be a thousand grams. So you can do quite a lot of things. Or you can print a very small amount of very large things that occupy your entire build plate. At least one spool of filament to get you started. I would just be really cautious dipping much below, say $18 for a spool of filament that's normally priced. I'm sure there are some quality makers around that price point, but in my experience, if you get into the 10 and $12 bargain bin where it's a, com a like, bulk commodity, you're going to run into some trouble. Quality is usually going to be dubious and the print properties might not be what exactly are advertised and you might have to do a lot more tuning than it's worth. Now, if you're looking to scrimp and save a few bucks, that might be the route for you to go. Personally, I like to avoid tuning as much as possible. So I typically tend towards quality where I can. Going much above $25 for a spool of basic PLA is not going to gain you very much. So I would be cautious about that as well. You might be getting taken for a ride. Plus, at this point, most slicers will give you an actual price estimate based off of the price of your material to show you a ballpark of what it's going to cost you in material to make your knickknack. And that really helps you, especially if you're really trying to be budget conscious. If you're following along at home, so far for the initial investment for a 3D printer, you're looking at $300-ish for a machine and about $22 for a spool of filament. So to get you off to the races, a ballpark investment of about $322 is really all you need to start making your first models. Now that you have your machine, you have your filament, you must be thinking to yourself, these quality models like my Ocarina or my really cool frog, they've got to cost something, right? Well, to you, not really. They only cost a few clicks through a repository like Printables or Thingiverse. The reality of the situation is 3D printing is very, very inspired by the community and there's a lot of sharing that goes on. So these big websites like Printables and Thingiverse, there are wonderfully talented creators who model up these things and share them for free with you, a member of the 3D printing community. And chances are, if there's something specific that you're looking for, like a Legend of Zelda Master Sword or a bracket to hold your headset onto your desk, chances are somebody already went ahead and saved you the trouble of designing it. So you can just click and download it for free. Now, you might run into situations where if the model isn't available for free somewhere, you are looking into paying for it. There are also creators who want to earn a little bit of compensation for their work, and that is perfectly fine they're putting in hours and hours of their own time to design something for distribution and sharing. So I do agree that creators should have a way to be compensated if possible. So you'll find paid for models on websites like Colts 3D and My Mini Factory, or even from specialty shops like Galactic Armory, where those individuals are designing up the really awesome helmets you see people making. The fact of the matter is, most models that you're going to want to print are free or very inexpensive. 
The most expensive model that I've personally paid for up to this point was around $20, but I can print that as many times as I want for that one time investment. So every single time that I print it, the initial investment makes the average price per unit go down. When it comes to the actual cost of models, we'll go ahead and we're going to call that $0. What if you wanna make your own models? Maybe you're interested in designing something. You have an idea in your head that you need to get out. In my opinion, one of the most satisfying things about 3D printing is actually when I design something and I take an idea that comes from my head or a suggestion from a friend or a family member and I get to actually design it in a CAD software and then bring it into reality with a 3D print. Those CAD software programs, those are known to be pretty expensive, right? Well, actually, two of the biggest ones that you're going to encounter in 3D printing are Fusion 360 and Blender. Both of those are completely free. Fusion 360 is really a CAD program, so if you're looking to design something that is dimensionally accurate, maybe a real world part, something that needs to maybe have specific tolerances or be geometrically accurate, it's going to be perfect for that. If you're looking to get into some more of the artistry side of 3D prints and you're looking to make really organic models, sculpts of people, animals, busts, statues, things like that, that's where Blender is really going to shine. Both of these softwares are truly professional grade and used by professionals and as a maker, as a hobbyist, you have access to them completely for free. And I would suggest watching some tutorials and learning a little bit about them so that way you can really let your imagination grow wild and bring all of those thoughts that you have in your head into physical space. The next piece of software that you're going to encounter is what's called a slicer. A slicer is how you take the digital file and get it prepared for 3D printing. There are a load of amazing free slicer programs. You have Prusa Slicer, Super Slicer, Orca Slicer, Bamboo Studio, Cura, Idea Maker. All of them are completely free of cost for you to use. At this point in 2023, if somebody tells you that you should be paying $149 for a slicer, politely tell them, get out. There are several free options that are just as good, if not better. So your printer is running away. You're making all the things and somebody asks you, isn't that thing expensive to run? How much electricity does it use? It has to use a lot. You're creating heat. You're powering the bed. You're moving the motors. The power of the sun in the palm of my hand. Well, in all reality, the kind of common consensus that I found online for how much power it takes to run a 3D printer is between 50 to 150 watts per hour. An incandescent light bulb is going to average at about 60 watts per hour, and your Xbox Series X for the gamers out there is going to consume around 150 watts per hour, which means your 3D printer is actually going to cost slightly more than a light bulb, but less than your video game console to make all the cool things that you want to own. So realistically, if you have lights in your house and you use them, I would call the electricity cost of running a 3D printer another negligible expense unless you're running a large-scale print farm or you're running several very large format machines 24 hours a day you're probably not going to feel the effects of running your 3D printer on your next electric bill. Like your car a 3D printer is a mechanical machine there are several moving parts there are parts that are designed to wear and be consumed as you go through. Some of your most frequently needed to be replaced items are going to include nozzles, Bowden tubes slash PTFE tube, V wheels if the printer that you're running has V wheels, maybe even belts. Your print surface that you're working on is also considered a consumable item and will need to be cleaned. And then you'll have to do some regular upkeep. You have to keep your Z rods on your machines lubricated so that way they have the best performance. And those things, while it sounds intimidating, really all in all aren't that expensive. Micro Swiss makes excellent nozzles for a lot of different 3D printers and E3D, they're the kings of the 3D printer nozzle. They revolutionized the industry a few years ago with the V6, which has kind of become a standard form factor. Their nozzles both are going to be in the $9.99 to $12-ish price point, unless you go for something a little bit higher end, like a wear-resistant nozzle. So you're only looking at about 10 bucks for a name brand recognizable nozzle. Whereas you can get commodity grade nozzles made of questionable materials. You can probably get 25 of them for the same price. I would steer clear of those personally and ends up being more headache than it's worth. As far as Bowden tube goes, the actual semi-translucent tube that your filament goes through on its path to your hot end, a premium manufacturer called Capricorn tube, they have one meter of Bowden tube starting at around $12. So 
that's not a huge expense either. For lubrication needs, you can get a tube of Super Lube on Amazon for your Z rods and other parts that need lubricated for about 10 bucks. Very affordable. And then my personal favorite thing for cleaning my print beds is actually 91 or 99 percent isopropyl alcohol and a plain white paper towel. I'm assuming you keep paper towels in your house. I know not everybody does, but a lot of us, at least here in the United States, do. So chances are you have that on hand. And you can pick up a bottle of isopropyl alcohol at your local drugstore or Walmart for around $4. Of course, the price per unit goes down if you want to buy in bulk on Amazon. Personally, I keep a gallon of 99% isopropyl on hand at all times. While it's true, you don't necessarily need your consumables and maintenance items when you first buy your printer. For their low cost, I would recommend picking them up early in your 3D printing adventure, so that way you have them on hand. Eventually, you're going to have an issue with the nozzle. You'll suffer a clog. You'll blow out a Bowden tube or it'll strip out of the coupler. You're going to need to clean your print bed and maybe your Z-axis on your Ender 3 starts to make a terrible squeaking noise and it's going to need to be lubricated. So I would suggest sooner rather than later, you start stockpiling some of these spare parts so that way you have them ready to go. If your printer messes up, you don't have to wait for the Amazon man to show up. You can get to work right away on making sure that your printer is running optimally and you are back in printing action. The absolute biggest investment into the world of 3D printing is going to be time. I just turned 26 recently, and while working on trying to maintain some of my other hobbies like bowling and disc golf and photography, while working a full-time job and managing this YouTube channel, I realized that time is far more finite than I ever thought it was. There's no way to get back more time. You can always make more money, but you can never make more time. So make sure you choose wisely on how you spend your time. While you're on your 3D printing journey, you're going to invest time into research, learning about machines, spare parts, how to do something specific, maintenance, how to use your slicer. Maybe you're going to start a free class on how to model things on Fusion 360. These things all take time and there's never enough of it. The other big time piece that you have to factor in is your actual prints themselves. These things don't just appear instantaneously. You could be printing something that only takes two minutes, two hours, two days, or heck, maybe even two weeks. Basically, running a 3D printer is the epitome of the phrase, hurry up and wait. You're going to bust your hump to get a file prepped and ready, and then you're sitting around waiting for it to be done. You're investing your time and energy into doing this. Once your machine starts running, you're at the mercy of time. If you have somebody in your life who might be interested in 3D printing, please be sure to share this video with them and let them see what the cost of 3D printing might actually look like for them. If you enjoyed the content so far, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. If you've been enjoying the content and haven't subscribed yet, please make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. We are posting every week and doing giveaways regularly and we want you to be a part of that. Speaking of time, I do want to extend my sincerest gratitude for you taking the time to hang out with me and listen to me ramble on about 3D printing. This is something that I'm incredibly passionate about and I realize that your time is limited. So thank you for hanging out. Realistically, once you get the initial investment of buying your 3D printer and some material out of the way, picking up some maintenance parts along the path, running a 3D printer is not that expensive. Energy costs are negligible and you can print really cool things for pennies on the dollar. I mean, again, around a dollar thirty, a dollar forty in material and I have an ocarina, whereas I could buy one on Amazon for like 25 bucks. While this doesn't match the game exactly, I like it more because I made it myself. 3D printing is not nearly as expensive as it used to be.